Hey guys, today we're doing a training video, a little bit of a vlog about how to wash your horse. In South Africa, specifically the Western Cape at the moment, we don't do a lot of washing, we're in a bit of a drought. Um, and especially if your horse is not doing showing, I suppose going to a show, you want your horse to be neat and clean and tidy, but it's not the end of the world if they're not very clean. Hey guys, today we're doing a training video, a little bit of a vlog about how to wash your horse. In South Africa, specifically the Western Cape at the moment, we don't do a lot of washing, we're in a bit of a drought. Um, and especially if your horse is not doing showing, I suppose going to a show, you want your horse to be neat and clean and tidy, but it's not the end of the world if they're not very clean. However, at the moment we've got AHS season, African horse season, which is carried around by midges. And so our grooms have gotten quite trigger happy with our spray bottles, with the fly spray. And um, I found Danny is quite oily and quite sticky at the moment. Um, so I'm a little bit worried that his skin got, gets irritated and gunky. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give him a wash today. We also happen to have a show tomorrow, so it's a perfect opportunity. And I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Let's have a look. So I generally wash the tail first. You'll see he absolutely dislikes it. The reason I wash the tail first is because I like to put some conditioner in it and then if I can leave the conditioner in for longer while I'm washing the rest of the body then that kind of makes my life a little bit easier. Because he's going to show tomorrow and I've got to pat his mane, I'm not going to put any conditioner in his mane <coughs> um, simply because then it's near impossible to pat. So you'll see I try and get the tail as wet as possible from the top all the way down. Right. And then my favorite shampoo at the moment is CQ shampoo. Um, another favorite of mine is the Carl Martin Day, the color shampoos. Um, for him, I would use black on his tail, and like the bay or the chestnut on his body. And then because he's got the four little white socks, the blue shampoo that they have for gray horses is amazing on there. But any shampoo will do. Try and use a shampoo that is formulated for horses. Um, the pH of their skin is slightly different than ours. There's nothing wrong with using human shampoo. You must just then be very, very careful that you don't wash them too often and strip their coats of oils that they might need. Especially if your horse is living out, I strongly recommend that you bath them as little as possible. Danny is stabled at night and he lives out during the day. We're quite fortunate in South Africa that that is how we can do it. So yeah, I just work up a quick lather and I try, especially here at the top, to try and get it in as close to the bone as possible. Especially with a horse like him who can get quite itchy on his tail. Strangely, it's the only part of his body that he ever gets itchy on. So I try and get it quite close. That also means that you kind of have to do quite a lot of rinsing. But we'll get there in a the moment. Right, so as you can see, as I'm pulling off the suds, not that dirty. Right, so a lot of people only rinse from the top. I tend to start like halfway down and rinse out what I can at the bottom and then go back to the top. I just find you tend to put so much effort into the top of their tail to get that clean and soap free and we tend to forget about the bottom. You could obviously also do this with a bucket. Makes your life a lot harder. Oh, it's cold, sorry, buddy. Makes your life a lot harder to just have a bucket. We are not fortunate enough to have warm water. Danny absolutely loves loop warm water. But um, today is quite hot. It's about 35 degrees Celsius outside. So, he'll be fine. And you'll also notice that um, even though I'm wearing shorts, I'm still wearing closed toe shoes. And that's because you really don't want to wear a pair of socks if you've got a horse stepping on your feet. 
And your horse might be the most perfectly well-behaved and well-mannered horse in the whole wide world. And you get to fight and it's still going to step on you. So it's always a good idea to keep safety first. And just mind your toes. And try and keep your feet as closed as possible. So that if they do step on you, at least the damage is minimal. So I take my time in making sure that I've got all the soap out. To be quite fortunate, our water pressure is quite good, so it doesn't actually take that long. But I'd much rather spend an extra five minutes on making sure everything is out before I condition this tail, then do a half job, and then tomorrow he's itches or heck, and then he rubs up the entire top part of his tail. Alright, so that to me looks like I've got most of it. So what I'm going to do now, before I start washing the rest of his body, is I'm going to use a conditioner, again specifically for ponies. And here you can be quite liberal. So, again, really try and get it in to the roots as much as you possibly can. Some horses absolutely love getting pampered and getting a bath. He's not one of them. So even though I try and take my time and try and do his best job as I possibly can, I also don't waste time around him. Um, he's one of those horses that if he gets very bored, he gets, becomes an absolute bully. So I don't want to give him half a chance of becoming bored enough to do that. So again, I work the conditioner all the way into the root of his dock. Try and get everything as moisturized as possible. Because then I just find that he scratches a lot less, probably because it's nice and moisturized and it's itchy. The bottom of the tail, you condition to keep the hairs from breaking. But again, this is for the hair, not necessarily for the hair follicles. So. Because I'm also going to chop off, worry about that much of his tail, just to neaten it up. I spent most of the time and most of the energy on the top. Make sure I get it into the bottom, that it's not the be all and end all of our most little spots as well. Alright, so now while that conditions, we're going to go over to the left side of his body. Okay, so like I said, he's not very fond of water. So I don't put too much press on it, I don't fight with him too much. I'm quite fortunate in that he stands quite up. So that makes my life a little bit easier. Body down and in true Danny style, he finds the hose pipe. Um, I just find that if the hair is wet all the way through to the skin, it's a lot easier to wash them, it's a lot easier to get the shampoo in. The only negative about doing it this way is that you have to make sure that you rinse them properly. Um, my very, very firm belief is that if you are not going to spend the time on rinsing them properly, don't wash them. You end up doing much more damage than the Right, so there's a couple of different things that you can do when you wash them. I like to use a curry comb. This one's got bigger bubbles and then smaller bubbles. I found that Danny doesn't quite like the really small bubbles. Um, but I have them if, if I need them. Right, so, I like to put my shampoo onto my curry comb and not onto the horse. Wrong way around. And then get it in. I find doing it this way saves me a lot of shampoo. It does take a little bit more time. But at the end of the day, you want the shampoo to be conditioning the coat as much as possible. You don't just want it to be flopping over. You'll notice that he does get quite irritated. I'm using almost no pressure on this curry comb 
He's quite a sensitive horse. Um, to be fair, I like him that way. Um, so I go very, very gently. Um, and if I start putting too much pressure on, I'm quite lucky. He'll tell me, he'll get irritated. He'll swish his tail, he'll try and bite me. Um, I actually never get after him about it, simply because he's trying to tell me he's uncomfortable. Um, he's not a nasty horse. Uh, you have to know your own horse in this situation. You know, if, it, if it's a horse that normally tries to bite people just for the sake of, then you have to get after them a little bit. But a horse like this, who doesn't generally try and nip and bite and get nasty, he's trying to tell you I'm uncomfortable when he tries to take a little bit of a nip at you. Alright, so I don't use the curry cone down on the legs. I use my hands for that. And especially because he's got these four little white socks, that's probably where most of my effort goes in on legs. Again, guys, if you're dressage riders, if you're show jumpers, if you're equitation riders, you don't get judged on things like, is your horse bathed? I think sometimes it's really nice for us to take our horses in to an arena when they're really nice and clean. I think it makes us feel more positive. Um, it gives you more confidence going in, but you don't get judged on it. So, you know, if it's a really cold day and you don't have warm water, you have no way of drying them off quickly afterwards. Or if your horse sleeps out, you know, it, it needs its oils in its coat. So in that case, I actually strongly would recommend against giving them a bath. Because it's so hot, I don't want to leave the shampoo in his coat. So I'm going to rinse this side, also using the curry cone, and then only am I going to move on to the other side. Um, I'm always very, very conscious because, like I say, he's got a bit of a sensitive skin. I'm always quite conscious to try and make it as positive as possible. And even now you can see his faces, he's not happy. But luckily we've been a team for about 10 years now. So we've got mutual respect for each other. And um, it's quite a good mutual understanding. So he knows he can tell me when it's too much. And um, I also know that in the process, I can put him in his place when I have to. It's all about knowing your horse, knowing what they're okay with, knowing what they hate. So I just keep going quietly over and over and over again. You gotta fly some, dude. Um, until when I do go over it, I see absolutely no first touch coming up. Like I said, that's why I like using the curry coat because it happens quite quickly. Now the one thing we always forget after we've washed the top is to rinse the bottom. Because remember all the side sides run down. So you need to make sure that you do get their tummy in the process as well, even if you haven't shampooed them. <coughs> I'll re-rinse his neck in a little bit with much lower water pressure, just to make him slightly happier. And then I wash these legs down from the top. Again, not using a curry comb, because the hair here is very thin, and the skin over his legs are pretty thin too. You'll see he starts getting a little bit annoyed because he's got all these water droplets coming off his tummy. And I'll give him a sweet scrape in a moment just to help him out with it a little bit. And then same thing with the back leg. And with the back legs, the one thing I always tend to forget is this inside. Just spend your time on it. You know, don't rush it. Never ever bath a horse if you can only give yourself half an hour. It should only take about half an hour. But if you only have half an hour, I can guarantee you it's going to take two hours. So you'll see now the water coming off is completely clear. No suds, so suds on it at all. So I'm really happy that he's quite dense on this side. So before I go over to the other side, you'll see he's swishing his tail because he really dislikes these droplets running off his tummy. Now if I'm cooling him off after work, I generally 
We'll straight scrape them at the bottom and leave the top so that it can cool down nicely. That's not our aim for today. So what I'm going to do, using the rubber side of it, is just sweat scrape all over his body gently with a firm pressure. Just to get the excess water out. It's almost like a little squidgy. And I don't go any lower than the muscles. Again, the legs you can almost like a ring out with your hands. And the one thing I definitely always do is the tummy, because that's the part that irritates them when it looks off there. And you'll see now it'll be quite a lot happier on them. Right, so let's move on to the other side. He's learning to like the camera. Yeah. He's even posing for it. I absolutely love standing on the hose. I think sometimes he makes a bit of a game out of it to see how hard he can make my life. So now, when I'm on this side, and I'm going to start wetting down the main, I turn the hose pressure down quite a bit because he's not quite water friendly. And you'll see even with the hose pressure turned right down, it's at a trickle. He's going to protest quite loudly. He's going to protest quite loudly when I do get up on his neck. And then obviously the fun part is trying to rinse all of this out. But um, with him, I know he hates water. It's quite a big step up for him to be willing to stand like this. So I don't pick a fight. I also never wash his face. I try not to wash too high up his neck. When he's worked and his face is quite sweaty, I actually use um, a face cloth or a tea towel to wash his face. I don't try and rinse it off. Um, again, you know, when you've had a horse for 10 years, you kind of try and compensate a little bit for that. All right, shampoo time, dude. I think we're going to have enough. Yeah. Oh! You'll also notice I don't wash the mane with a curry comb. Um, he's got almost no mane, so it's quite a bit longer than people always expect it to be, so that I can get it flattened flat, properly. Um, so I'll go in there with my hands in just a moment. Just trying to get the body done, especially because he doesn't particularly like this. Again, I don't fuss too much if he moves around. He is tied up. He is inside a wash bay as well. Um, you know, he's not being dangerous. He's not being malicious. He's just showing me he's a little bit uncomfortable, especially around his tummy and his sensitive areas. So I'm not going to make a big fuss about it. It's really honestly not worth picking the fight. Okay, so now, before I do his legs, I'm going to do his mane. simple just like you would shampoo your own hair getting to the root scrub a dub dub and if you have a horse like mine and you can't rinse high up be very mindful of how high up you shampoo because I try and get as deep into the roots as possible so it's gonna take me a good five ten minutes just to hose his mane off because I have to be able to get the hose pipe all the way up there and rinse all of that back out There we go. 
give them a cool hairstyle in the process. Right, front legs and back legs. just for the rinse. So now because I've got to rinse his mane, I tend to always start with his mane before he gets ridiculously difficult about it. And I always find if you try and rinse the neck first and then the main, you have to re-rinse the neck anyway. So, here we go. So again, this is going to take a while. I might have to open it up just a little bit more here. Notice that our water pressure kind of waxes and wanes. We have a borehole on the farm. It's about an 11 hectare farm. So when guys have been putting water back, the water pressure disappears. And then when they're done, like now, the water pressure arrives back up again. So I honestly don't mind playing around with it until I'm happy with it. Simply because I don't want to pick a fight with him. And he's gotten much better with us over the years. Yeah, I'm getting water all the way down my throat. Ishmael, yes. there is another hose pipe if you want to attach it that side, hey? Okay. Sorry, because I might be a little off. start filming online dressage tests, I couldn't get him past C because he wouldn't go past the camera. So this is absolutely fantastic. If you've got a hose that is higher up, it makes life a lot easier. You'll see this poor hose has gotten taken a beating because the horses always step on it. Danny being prime example. Oh. No, 
Te počku. to rinse and that's the tail. So we're not rinsing the tail now, I always stand to the side. As you'll notice we'll probably tuck his bum up because it's quite cold. And I just really do not feel like him taking a swipe at me. Chances are very slim. He's not that type of horse. But again I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I came to start on the top on one side. In mind that I didn't put a lot of condition at the bottom. So now I've washed all of him. Um, because he's got such a thin tail, I try and look after as best as I can. He likes to get quite serious dreadlocks in it too. So I love, absolutely love, 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 Car Martin and Dale's Man and Tail Conditioner. This spray can that they've got out, you can spray it upside down, it still keeps going. It is awesome. So I spray it quite liberally into his tail. And then I grab a tail brush, or you can use a comb. Again, I know I might be crucified for this, but this is how I do it. And I just very gently brush from the bottom until the brush just slides through. Then I take the next section and I pull it up because I don't want, when I'm brushing and I do catch a knot, I want it to pull against his tailbone. I'd much rather have it pull against my hand. Next section. Now I'm not going to put any conditioner in his mane simply because we've got a plait tomorrow and if I put conditioner in that mane because it's so flimsy and so thin there's just no way I'll be able to get it rolled I might get it plait but I definitely won't get the rolls to stay up Right So that's conditioning his tail and getting it sleek and slick Now I'm going to do his body with exactly the same type of product I like to use the Fanta Coat Shine, the conditioner, um, especially when he's just been clipped 
he tends to go quite dry and ugly. So this, I'm not going to brush in. I'm just going to spray. It. And the nice thing is, because he's just been washed, his paws are quite open. I can go in where I want to go in. And luckily for me, I have a horse who just stands. I know some horses would absolutely die if you did this too. And then I like to just give him a rub, specifically on his bands. Yes. Because he's quite a scratchy child. Again, this container is so cool, you can flip it upside down, it just keeps going. Yeah. And you're just a rubber dub dubs. Yeah. So what I'll do now is um, because he's still quite wet, I'm not going to pop him straight back into his stable. It's about four o'clock. They only get fed in half an hour or so. So I'm going to take him for a walk so he can eat some grass, dry off nicely. And then while he's eating, I'll probably give him a proper groom. Because again, guys, remember, you've just given your horse a wash. Everybody always thinks this is the final step. You've created all of this open pores, and open hair follicles. Now get it out. Give him a proper groom. Give him a curry comb. Spend some time on them. And I promise you tomorrow he's going to look flippin' awesome. Thanks for watching. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and buzz the bell. And although, kijk nu uit en volk voort.